From the archives of the United States Cavalry, the true stories of Colonel Randall McKenzie and the cavalrymen he led. McKenzie's Raiders. His secret orders from the President of the United States. Clean up the Southwest. Make it a fit place for Americans to live. Wipe out the renegades, outlaws, and murderers. If necessary, cross the Rio Grande, knowing capture means hanging by the enemy. Discovery, court-martial by the United States Army. June 13th, 1874, morning. A lone courier and a punished animal sped through the vast waste of Southwest Texas. The courier bore a message so vital, so secret, that it could not be relayed by telegraph or mail. The man for whom it was intended, the commander of Fort Clark, Colonel Randall Slidell McKenzie. The man from whom it came, the President of the United States. I did like the colonel said, sir. That courier will sleep for a week. Yeah, uh, stand at ease. Did you see Toad, he got something to eat? Well, Colonel, I made the mistake of showing him his bedroll first. He sure must have rode a long way. Uh, he did. Sergeant, I'll need you and three other raiders, volunteers for my group. Yes, sir, there's uh, me and Dixon, Brown. Sergeant, I said volunteers. Yes, sir. Uh, volunteers for what, sir? We're going to take a ride into Mexico. Yes, sir. About 340 miles into Mexico. Yes, sir. I must say you took it better than I did. Took what, sir? 340 miles. That means there can't be any quick dash back across the Rio Grande if we get into trouble. Yes, sir. All right, Sergeant. Organize the volunteers. All right, always, sir. Come on, Sergeant. You will be sure they're volunteers, won't you? Oh, yes, sir. Private Lewis, Corporal Brown, Corporal Dixon, Thank you for the volunteers, Sergeant. At ease. There's every possibility that we may fail in the mission we're about to undertake. There's every need that we do not fail, because if we do, the United States will probably be at war with Mexico. I imagine that you've all heard of Michael Lucas O'Hara. General Michael Lucas O'Hara? Right. The Yankee who sold out his battalion at Pine Ridge? Well, he disappeared in 64. He's reappeared in San Rodrigo, Mexico. Our orders are to go in and get him. Further, our orders are to bring him out. And within a week's time. And without being seen by federales. San Rodrigo is 340 miles below the Mexican border. I think you all understand what that means. Now, I'll understand if any of you wants to withdraw from the mission. Private Lewis? Ready, sir. Corporal Brown? Ready, sir. Corporal Dixon? Ready, sir. Sergeant? Thank you, man. Dismiss. Dismiss. Sir, if the Colonel will pardon my asking. If you'll close the door, the Colonel will pardon you for asking. Sir, why the weak time limit? Sergeant, we've gotten word that O'Hara is part of a scheme to overthrow the Mexican government. On the 16th, our information says. Also, he's uh, letting word get around that he has the support of the United States. Well, why can't the Mexican government do something about O'Hara? 
I'm sure that question's been asked before. Whatever the answer is, the fact remains the president has ordered us to act. I'd almost rather stay in Mexico than come back without O'Hara. When do we leave, sir? Immediately. We'll carry our own food and water. And how much ammunition? Well, if we're spotted by federales, we can't stay and fight. We've got to run for it. On the other hand, we'll be going through Mescalero Apache territory. It's arid country. Water will be just as valuable as bullets. Let's say only 20 rounds per man. Yes, sir. Have the men ready to leave singly in 30 minutes. Yes, sir. So Mackenzie and his raiders assembled secretly on the American side of the border. The task before them was an almost impossible challenge. But the orders from their commander-in-chief were specific. Return with John Lucas O'Hara. For 36 hours, they rode deep into Mexico. The border was now 200 grueling miles behind them. On the second night, now in Mescalero country, they rested. and made off of the horses. What do we do now, sir? They'll run till they think they're safe. And where'll they think they're safe? Get the saddles. We're gonna climb those rocks. Mackenzie's position was now desperate. To push deeper into Mexico without horses was to invite certain disaster. Yet there could be no turning back. Only one slim chance remained to Mackenzie, and on this chance he had to gamble. What's the matter, kid? My poor horse. Huh? I think he has to carry me, too. How do you figure we've come on foot? 30 miles, maybe. Still leaves 100 to go. And 345 miles back. Let's get some rest while we can. Well, it isn't possible, is it? The Colonel seems to think so. That's good enough for me.
Finally, after three and a half torturous days, their goal was in sight. Bring my blanket. Blanket, sir? Not even one guard. Maybe they weren't expecting us. Suppose we ought to wake them, let them know we're here? No. Let them sleep. They're probably tired. No telling how many there are inside, Sergeant. What are we going to do? After 345 miles, you're still asking that? All right. While they're still sleeping, we'll go in there and take him. Sergeant, bring that blanket. Lewis, you stay here and cover us, coming and going. All right, follow me. Having come 340 perilous miles, Mackenzie and his raiders had now to breach O'Hara's stronghold to find the man who would willfully destroy the growing peace between Mexico and the United States. Give me a knife, Dixon. Suppose he was guarding somebody important. Only one man I know that needs a bodyguard. Well, seeing as he ain't gonna be able to guard anybody for time, I'd like to volunteer for his job.
Xavier, is that you? Bring me a fresh towel, will you please? You're on Burr had nothing on you, mister. Just give me a reason. Tie him up. Go ahead, General O'Hara. For me, just one little sound. Tie his boots around his neck. If we're spotted, make sure that you get him before they get us. Your boots, sir. All right, quiet. Let's go. Get him up on that horse. Sergeant, you ride double with him and be careful. Dixon, you and Brown mount double on the other horse and ride to where we left ours. If it's all the same, sir, I'll stay with you. It's not all the same. Mount up. Come on, come on. Too easy. Gets tougher as we go along. Go on. Dixon, give me a knife. Ah, I'm much obliged to you. But aren't you afraid I might escape? No. This is Mescalero Apache country. One man alone wouldn't have much chance. If you get me to Washington, I'll have no chance. Here, at least, I can... From what I've heard about you, Mr. O'Hara, you're not a man who likes to take chances with his own personal safety. And what have you heard, Colonel? That rather than die needlessly, I capitulated to the enemy? That you sacrificed the trust of your men in order to secure your own safety? They could have enjoyed that safety as much as I. Instead, they chose something a soldier calls honor. And they died at Andersonville. It was their choice. Tell me, Mr. O'Hara, was it easier to sell out your country down here in Mexico than to sell out your own men at Pine Ridge? Colonel, I found out when I was quite young. A man's conscience is too often a barrier to personal gain. I have simply denied mine. It's interesting. I've never talked to anyone like this before. It's too bad you haven't. Maybe those men wouldn't have had to die at Andersonville Prison. Get out of here. At a gallop.
Party. They're going away. Why is that, Colonel? I don't know. I don't know. I... He's dead. The Indians must have known. That's why they ran off. Won't those Apaches come back? They wanted our horses, maybe our scalps. But they won't come within miles of this place now. This man died of smallpox. We'd better get out of here. No, I think it's all right. He's probably been dead 24 hours. Wouldn't be much chance of contamination after that. Everyone remain just where they are. I have a knife at this boy's back. Sure enough has, sir. Your information about the Indians is most comforting, Colonel. It'll ease my mind on the way back to San Rodrigo. It's a bad try, O'Hara. We all of us came on this mission expecting death. Just say the word. This one will get it first. Go ahead and take him, Colonel. I'll take my chances. This makes the odds just a little bit better. I can get two of you. Maybe three. Don't let him get away. Do something. Don't make a move. Get away from that door. I'm not afraid, sir. Sarge, Nixon. <laughs> All right, sir. You got me in the hand. I grabbed the blade. But it hurts. Sure it does. Strange. I never figured on his loyalty to you. Loyalty is something you know very little about, Mr. O'Hara. But you, sir. Oh. It hurts. By all reckonings, the mission should have failed, but it didn't. At best, the casualties should have been high, but they weren't. In the daily reports, Mackenzie's journey into Mexico was listed simply, Mission Accomplished. For their part in the raid on San Rodrigo, the raiders received commendations from the man who had led them. Colonel Ranald Slidell Mackenzie, 4th Cavalry Commanding, Fort Clark, Texas. Mackenzie's raiders rode again and again, carrying out the secret orders of the President of the United States. Do whatever necessary to clean up the Southwest. Make it a decent place for people to live. Ride with Mackenzie's raiders as they relive the blazing pages of history in the making. <laughs> 